everyone, and thank you for joining my talk. My name is Gil Bitton, and today I'm going to talk about Red Team Challenges. I will also demonstrate how we tackled these challenges in our team and enable you to do so in yours. Before we dive in a bit about myself, I'm originally from Israel, but currently based in Singapore. Hacking was always part of my life, resulting me in trying to figure out how I utilize technology and science in order to basically make my life easier. I have over five years of experience within the cybersecurity industry, where I started from application penetration tests through infrastructure engagements and red teaming. My expertise lies around enterprise security and the related aspects of it. Today, I work at Signia Consulting as an offensive security engineer, being part of its security research team. I am available on many social networks, which I listed here, so feel free to reach out. First, let me give you some context. We have to admit it, red and purple teaming became harder. Throughout the past years, Red teamers are struggling with challenges during engagements. This is because organiza organizations lifted up their detection capabilities and also integrated advanced security solutions. This caused the, the execution of even basic red team tasks to get complicated. Organizations have also a variety of products and vendors incorporated in their networks making techniques that work in one organization to fail or get detected on another. Logging and monitoring capabilities were also enhanced. We are recorded 24-7 by the Big Brother team and its SOC siblings, so avoid triggering alerts during an operation became a challenge by itself. To handle the situation, adversaries spend even more time on the weaponization phase and this is done prior and during the operation. Many times these tasks are repetitive and sometimes cause delays due to technical issues. And these technical issues we have all experienced before. Let me ask you a question. How many times have you weaponized the same tool? Or how many times you helped a colleague to use a technique that you found or used Speaking about colleagues, while working with a growing team that are divided across multiple engagements, we realized that new challenges were added. These challenges include working from home due to the COVID era or back-to-back -back engagements. Also, new developments that team members created got lost as soon as they finished their engagements. So, we understood that we want to have a better platform to collaborate on. In my opinion, having a base standard can enable equal capabilities across your team members. Now, whenever we do develop or discover a new capability, we have to somehow store it, right? There are many documentations and methodologies out there and every day a new exploit technique or tool are released. So sometimes it's hard to follow and incorporate every technique in your methodologies while being busy on, with multiple engagements. Security teams are also sharing thoughts during whole conversations or coffee breaks, but memorizing and storing this entire content in an efficient way became complicated. So until Elon Musk will provide us his neural link, we have to find a solution. We understood that we want to import more automation into our engagements. As we want to reduce the time on repetitive tasks, which we are not really interested in. We know that the community already adapted the CICD pipelines concept to automate tasks that are related to offensive tool weaponization. Offensive CICD pipelines have been around for a couple of years with the goal of helping red teams to automate their tasks. 
I'm not going to talk in detail about CICD, but we are going to dive into the advantages of using it for offensive needs. I truly believe that we cannot automate the entire red team operation, as we need to bring our own expertise, knowledge, and way of thinking. We want to have a mind behind the operation who can take decisions in real time and according to the feedback he receives. So then he will be able to put more focus on bypassing new barriers which he never tackled before. We started exploring the CICD area and performed a research that ended up with a pain that we really wanted to solve. This pain pushed us to design and develop our own uh, offensive pipeline framework while focusing on the needs of our growing adversarial team. Such needs include simplicity. As being part of a growing team, we wanted to onboard new members to use that concept easily and also make it even simpler for us so the migration will be faster. There is also a need for modularity. The framework must allow the developed techniques to be packaged individually so we can mix between them when assembling pipelines that weaponize different tools. We wanted that the framework will be able to maintain itself so we don't add overhead to ourselves by maintaining it. We are looking for a system that anyone can contribute to, so the efforts will be gained from each and every team member. This is because we have all many engagements and any of our team members solving complex uh, uh, challenges that we can then uh, share back to our uh, offensive pipelines framework. We want also that the environment's infrastructure be controlled by us, since the sources and the tools we are trying to weaponize considered malicious, and we don't want them to get analyzed or blocked. Thus, having these frameworks on a SaaS solution could create obstacles throughout the way. Also, while performing a retin, you sometimes in a need for a specific tool. This tool can aid you with achieving your goal. And we all know that we may lose the, the operation when having delays during it. We have to remember that each engagement gets different artifacts, so it will not affect the other, other engagement if the device and the collection of the, of the uh, tools will be, will be lose, lose its reputation. But now considering all these needs, we ended up choosing GitLab as the core of our framework. If you're looking at their high level description, we may predict that it can answer our needs. And let me explain why. We research a variety of frameworks such as Jenkins, CircleCI, GitHub Actions, and AppVeo, which served us for the past year, where we learned the power of having CICD concepts within your security needs. These tools didn't really came up with our needs. Even GitLab was not perfect. I actually started going over their source code when I saw a possible constraint. But still, high level is gibberish, gibberish, so let's discuss the technical aspects of it. So GitLab started off being code repository version control, allowing you to store and manage sources of your, of your tools. GitLab also provides a RESTful API, which allows you to automate anything that you can basically do manually. It comes together with a detailed documentation that can save you some time when you try to figure out how to approach a call. A must-have feature is the GitLab CI, providing you with the ability to create pipeline jobs, which I refer as recipes. This is done in a simple and organized manner through the YAML format files. 
The CICD also offers multiple integrations to different systems where you can execute your job recipes. For example, as part of the CI concept, you, you need to execute your jobs in an operating system, either Linux or Windows. It can be on a single server or on a container. And having a, a support with Docker and Kubernetes can help you with achieving the goal faster. Jobs can also be executed on, be on, on specified conditions. For example, on a push that you, you just did to your, your repository, or whenever another pipeline just ended successfully, or being triggered by another pipeline. The multiple pipeline support allows to trigger several pipelines through executing only one. For example, when we perform a rating, we tend to use a collection of tools and we don't want to weaponize them one by one, right? We want to trigger a one pipeline that will deliver all of them to ourselves. I believe that this is just the tip of the iceberg and I'm pretty sure that you'll find additional features to use in the future. Let's see a simple example of an offensive pipeline recipe in motion. The pipeline starts off cloning the Rubius tool, a C-sharp tool from the code repository. Then the tool gets built using a job that we define containing the dependencies for MS, of msbuild. The compiled binary passes to the next stage where it gets obfuscated using Confuser EX. The confused binary then passes to the next stage where it gets wrapped by a .NET assembly loader, thus letting us to execute a .NET tool via PowerShell. Finally, it gets deployed to your favorite bucket, so you can download it from anywhere you want. In addition, we also deploy it here to our Pondrop server, which is a server that allows you to manage the way you download your files. Another example can go with PowerShell, where we use the tool Invoke Domain Password Spray. In this time, we don't need to build it, but aggregate it from few PowerShell scripts. The combined PowerShell script is then passes to the next stage where it get where it being obfuscating obfuscated with Chimera, that a tool that designed to bypass AMZ and IT virus when uh, obfuscating PowerShell scripts. Then it goes directly to the last stage where it gets deployed to our Pondrop server, so we'll be able to download and execute it on the targeted environment. In the same way, we made, may add additional sources of different tools and define the pipelines with jobs that we already developed. And this is where the modularity plays its significant role. For dessert, we can use the pipeline triggering options or GitLab API to trigger multiple pipelines based on different groupings. This enables us to weaponize tens and hundreds of tools in minutes. Today, I want to introduce Scallops. Scallops is a framework that empowers red teams by enabling them to put more focus on what they need to do instead of how to do it. And this can be achieved by designing great recipes. Let's dive in to see the possibilities of this framework. So, After we authenticate to our GitLab, we can see that it contains few repositories. The one, the first one is the CI recipes. The CI recipes is a collection of all the YAML files that could contain the jobs that we are using to weaponize our tool. The three other repositories are tools that we want to weaponize. Now, let's say we want to add additional tool and 
In this case, we want to add uh, the sharp EDR checker. What we're going to do is that we're going to enter the CI recipes tool, the CI recipes repository, and add the relevant uh, direction for the sharp EDR checker tool. In this time, we will use the web IDE, which is very useful here. And you will see few sections within this repository. The relevant repository for the tools are, is the tools controller, where you can see the recipes of the different tools we want to weaponize. The tools index contain all the tools that are imported to the GitLab instance. To add the additional tool, we have to create an additional object within this array and provide it with the sharp EDR checker git repository link. We have to also specify the name of the project in order to for the uh, automation to not uh, to distinct between the other projects and also create a recipe for it so it can be automated with the weaponization of itself because the its recipe is not uh, existing yet we have to create it using a new file and because Sharp EDR Checker is a C Sharp file that was built seemingly the same to uh, built and structure uh, the same as Rubius, we can actually copy the same recipe and change the relevant namings. We have to remember which stages are we going to execute. In this, in this case, we are going to build, obfuscate, and deploy it. Now, all the relevant jobs are included within the YAMLs above. Now, when, when we commit the tools index, we actually trigger a pipeline that automatically imports the tool. You can see that the pipeline was triggered below and a job was created. We let the job to work and see how we, um, we designed it to do it. So under the CI maintain, we included many things that maintain the framework and the infrastructure itself. And in tools import, we have the import public tools job where it reads the tools index file and compare it with the existing project within our GitLab instance. Eventually, it, impo it imports the leftover tools. As you can see, the job was succeeded. We also have uh, the, the API output here. And we can see that Sharp EDR checker was added to our projects list. Let's trigger its pipeline and see what happens. If you remember, we pointed it at builds, obfuscate, and deploy stages. As you can see, there are three different stages with each with job on each of them. So Let's understand each and every job. Let's go to the build job, which will possibly be under the CA builders in sharptools.yaml. Here we're using a customized Windows container where we created it to contain the MS build and all its relevant dependencies to build C Sharp tools. It will build it with, it will compile it with the release configuration and eventually upload it to the job artifact so the next job will be able to pick it up. The 
the next stage is confuse is uh, obfuscating with the confuser ex which will be under ci obfuscations the confuser ex also executed on a container a customized container that we created for it it starts off uh, fetching the previous uh, the artifact from the previous job and executing the confuser ex uh, features to obfuscate the compiled binary eventually it will also upload the compile obfuscated binary to the job artifact so the next job will be able to pick it up the last job is deployed to pond drop let's take a look at what it is it will be under the ci deployers pond drop deploy pond drop job it will be executed on a Linux container. And if you notice, we are actually weaponizing our tool through two different operating systems with different dependencies. And this is done in no time. For deploying to Pundrop, we have to provide this job a uh, relevant variables that it will be able to uh, reach it and upload the files in with a uh, um, with the relevant access. Since we didn't provide these variables, this, jo this job will be failed. Let's leave it here and go to, the, to, to, to take a look at the uh, multi-pipeline uh, feature. This is, will also be part of the CI recipes. And we want actually to build and uh, trigger the pipeline of the three repositories that we had. So we already made a uh, AD YAML under the under the CI multi pipeline uh, folder, where there are three different jobs that actually trigger the pipeline of the other repositories. When we supply the uh, the condition to to execute these jobs are when you supply the ci multi-trigger variables together with the relevant value and in that way we can tag different a uh, group of tools in order to trigger their pipelines together in an efficient way let's execute the pipeline of the CI recipes in order to choose the relevant, uh, the relevant, uh, the relevant pipeline. As you can see, we have the CI multi-trigger uh, variable here, which execute multiple pipelines. So we want to execute all of them and they all have the all term. So we just write all. And since we want to deploy them to our point of server, we have to provide its URL and also its write key. We'll copy it and enter into the variables. We can extract the write key from this uh, uh, green button. Do don't enter. Don't enter this. Just take the right key. Now we can run the pipeline and see that the uh, uh, relevant repositories pipelines were triggered directly from here. We can see that PowerUp SQL was triggered, Rubius, and also Godi. These tools are made from three different, different languages that we wanted to show you. Rubius passes through the build of this case and deploy in the same way we did with Sharpie DR checker because we copied that. PowerUp SQL goes through Chimera and deployment and got it just go to get built and being deployed.
Now we'll wait for the pipeline to finish in order to see what happens. So green indicates that everything was done successfully. Let's take a look at the output of the PowerUp SQL jobs so we can understand what really happened. We see that a lot of obfuscation uh, values here and we see that it also uploaded the artifact for the next job. Here in the Pondrop deploy, we'll be able to see that the job succeeded and we can see also the response from the Pondrop. It means that all the files that we just uh, created, all the pipelines should be right here deployed. Let's change the way that uh, Shimera is being uh, downloaded and take a look at the file. So as you can see, all the strings looks obfuscated and randomized, even the uh, function's name. So looks very useful. The last thing I wanted to show you is the Docker files. We are actually storing our customized Docker files within the maintain folder where there is a job that, that can pick them up and build, build them on top of another container. This is only supported with Linux and is maintained through a Google project named Kaniko. We actually can take this Docker file and build it through our pipeline, managing all the infrastructure and this framework as a code. You can see that we have a special variable to trigger that kind of pipeline. If we'll take a look at the CI recipes pipeline and try to trigger it, we will be able to provide the name of the Docker files we want to build and push. Dockerfile build Linux is the name of the variable, and now we will enter the name of the Dockerfile, the prefix of it, that we want to actually build and push. As you can see, a new job was created named build Linux, Linux container. And this job is, can be found under the CI container builder where it actually uses the Kaniko project. Eventually it pushes the container to our private container registry. Great. So hope you enjoyed the demo. And after we've seen all the magic, let's understand what is the infrastructure running behind the scenes of this framework. So we start off having, we start off having the GitLab instance. And this GitLab instance comes with the built-in CI/CD. To execute our jobs, we are using Kubernetes cluster, where, where we have two different node pools. One node pool for executing Linux-related jobs, and the other one for executing Windows-related jobs. In order for the Kubernetes cluster to communicate with the GitLab instance, GitLab created something called GitLab Runner, which is a Helm deployment that you can deploy to your, to your Kubernetes cluster which will act as a proxy between the GitLab instance and the Kubernetes cluster. It re will receive jobs from the GitLab instance and instruct the Kubernetes cluster how to, to execute them. We also created another GitLab runner deployment that is responsible for the Windows related jobs. Our Kubernetes cluster is connected to our container registry where we are storing our customized con container containers to use during the operation and the pipeline execution. 
Now, having this framework on-prem can be nice and great. Let's assume that we can also shift it to the cloud. And using, in this example, Google Cloud resources in order to host it. And in this time, we created the Kubernetes engine together with Google Container Registry, which communicate perfect, uh, where we attached a service account with the relevant permissions to push and pull containers. The Kubernetes engine and the uh, GitLab instance can communicate internally because they are sitting on the same VPC. We also added a Google store cloud storage to allow ourselves storing some utilities that we will, be, we will need during our pipelines. We also created a firewall rule to allow us operate the framework and use it and actually enjoy it without exposing it to the world internet. Everything is sitting on a single GCP project where we can maintain it in one place. The GitLab then can uh, import tools from uh, remote Git repositories. And as part of the scale of framework, we are releasing a Terraform script that will allow you to deploy the exact same environment in your cloud. This is comes with the built-in recipes we've just shown before. All you need is a GCP subscription and a web browser. Refer to the project's repository and follow the instructions. Few words about the cloud costs. We can divide it to idle and to per job because we want the framework be uh, waiting for us so when we want to operate it and run the pipelines. But we're not always continuously running pipelines. So, so there is a need to operate two instances that are utilizing most of our credit. Also, there is a per job credit that takes out when you provision, provision new nodes. And this is very tricky because you may provision one node and create one job which will translate it into one pod, but if you create 10 jobs simultaneously, they will use the same credit. Unless you plan, you plan to supply weaponized tools to the world community, the bottom line is that you have to pay less than 100 US dollars a month in order to use this framework. Additional thoughts that came up to my mind during creating the, the framework and also the, uh, this presentation is, are that this can be a community-driven framework. We just released the infrastructure, the, the code of the infrastructure, and also the CI recipes repository itself, allowing people to collaborate and share their techniques through, uh, through one place where anyone can enjoy and share. Uh, this is, can be done in the same way people are sharing today Cobalt Strike aggressor scripts. There will be another problem uh, coming up to you after uh, using this framework because now you will be able to speeding up, speed up the tasks that uh, you're using you're doing when you performing red team engagement. Finding yourself collecting all the, the enumeration, reconnaissance, a lot of information in no time. So you will find yourself trying to understand how you process all this data now. Also, if your team will really uh, take, take the decision to um, use this framework in an efficient way, you may end up finding an operator executing a task that bypass few security uh, tools, security defensive tools, when the, where the, the operator will not even know how he bypass them. And I'm not into not knowing what you're doing, but this is a thing that can happen, which may enable additional people to, pers to perform adversary simulations and ratings. Also, I believe that the question about command and controls came up to your mind. And we are not 
planning on replacing them with the offensive pipelines, but we do have to use them together because command controls are very monitored tools by the detection and prevention security tool and also they are not they are not getting uh, enough updates so you may find yourself using an old update of some tool and and trying to figure out how to load a new tool now also with the offensive pipelines you may find yourself grabbing your beacon agent or grant from your favorite command control perform the obfuscation and evasion techniques on it uh, send it back to some hosting server so we will be able to download and execute it on the targeted environment without getting detected I also listed here the references to the technologies that these frameworks leans on. You can go ahead to extend your knowledge about every byte and bit that actually created this framework. I want to thank anyone who took part in designing this framework and also for anyone who helped me, who helped me in pre with preparing this presentation. So thank you very much. And also, thank you for staying up until now. I hope that, that, that you enjoy the talk and consider to adapt CICD concepts into your ratings. I will be taking your questions, feedbacks, and comments on the Discord server. See you there. Bye-bye.